So I came across this video, it's from my boy, Rich Cooper. Let me double check. And he basically was talking about why you should never take your ex-girlfriends back. Interesting topic, considering the fact that mostly everybody that follows me, mostly is mostly men. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big gap. Now we're trying to welcome some women in. I just like, what, what are y'all doing? Like, why aren't y'all, come on, man. But I'm, I went across this topic and I was like, mm, this is interesting. I want to see exactly what they say, but in good fashion, you know what I'm saying? I can't do it without y'all, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna check this out and we're gonna talk about it. Man, if, if you like style of videos like this, more style, more talking, interesting analysis and shit type videos, man, do me a favor, man, hit the like button, let your boy know. The like button is how you let your boy know. I'm like, okay people are feeling it you know what i'm saying because they're liking it you know what i'm saying go down below and subscribe if you're new man but let's go ahead and get dive deep into this and see exactly what's going on with this topic right? i know that like you know rollo's been married for a good chunk of his life so he hasn't seen this but like every single relationship from my 20s onwards has always been an upgrade interesting that's interesting to think about bro you always got to step your game up if you hop out of a relationship you can't go down you got to go up man that, that, for, for that's for women too you need to step your but if women if women i feel like women uh, naturally just go up but guys we just kind of sometimes we could just go down we don't even care you gotta go up you got you got to go up um there was a stand-up comic that made a joke about this once where you know like women will never go down financially with men Men, men, generally speaking, especially once they get red pilled, will tolerate less and less crap. And often, you know, women or a female primary social order will, will point and sputter at these guys and say, oh, you're immature, you're a commitment phobe, you know, fill in the narrative or the point and sputter reason why you're not, you know, settling down for this, you know, single mom with three kids in tow from two different fathers and an extra 50 pounds before you knew her in her 20s when she dumped you. For those of y'all that know that know that red pill community, um, I'm actually a part of it. So when when you when you get introduced into red pill content, when you start actually taking a deep dive into it, you start understanding that okay, there's a level of respect that you have to um you have to have you have to raise the bar i'm talking about like raising the bar comes with self-love self-care understanding like who you are as a man who you are as a person what you like to do and when you understand those things your self-respect goes higher bro like it just can't not go higher because you like imagine you knowing who you are uh, at least learning who you are. Imagine you doing things that you haven't been doing. You're not chasing women all the time, but instead you're actually focused on yourself and grinding. Like that right there in itself will get you to raise your self-respect. So when you get introduced to the red pill, a lot of men, like he said, do they do level up in their head and their mindset end up getting more women because women don't want to pump. They don't want somebody that they can push around. Like, come on, bro. She could push you around she think in her head like, damn, other men probably push you around. Other women, women don't want no fan. They want the celebrity. Because you've gotten better and you tolerate less BS. And it's not misogyny, it's not women hate, it's just, you know, there's a lot of people out there that can that get that confusion. It's just, no, as you get better and, you, and your SMV goes up and you make more money, you learn some game, you know, you put a dent in the universe, your value is greater than what hers is because her, her peaks in her 20s, you know, it's 22, 23, 24. After that, she's generally speaking on the decline. You know, sometimes you can push it off a little bit with some good health habits, but she's on the decline. I mean, it's it's just the reality of life. That is that is facts, bro. You know, a lot of men like I'm I'm 27. Um, my peak uh, was not in my 20s. Like my peak is my, I'm peaking now. If y'all can see with the grind that I'm putting, I'm peaking, I'm getting more cut, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting smarter, I'm doing better things, I'm into new things. I got a few kids. But my peak is now, my money is going up. My influence is going up. Shout out to the 10K, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're getting ready to hit 10K. But understand that, our women's peak is when they're in their 20s, they're the height of their beauty. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying women only can give beauty. That's not all that they offer. But what I'm trying to tell you is that how society looks at it, society looks at men, money, and money being tangible. They look at men, our value comes from what we can provide. A lot of times to provide, you either have to have protection and money. All right. So if you know how to fight, if you know how to shoot a, a, a gun, if you know how to defend yourself and defend her, then you're valuable. 
Also, if you have money, you're really valuable because right now money is the basis of survival for our modern culture. Right. I, if you, when you were reading um, the Iron Rule number seven, uh, yep. which is you know never never root through garbage, the other part of that I think is almost more important, and they and that is that it is time better spent developing new women and new pros- prospective women than it is trying to restart or to like repair an old relationship. Mm-hmm. Because when you get into that, when you're like, when you get in this mode of thinking, like the, uh, couples, like when they go to like marriage counseling or something, they're already in this mode. And the mode is you're negotiating genuine desire. When you first met that girl that you were with, and then you broke up with her for whatever, like she broke up with you or whatever, for whatever reason, Prior to that breakup, when you guys were getting together, it was hopefully it was based on genuine desire. She actually wanted to get with you and you guys were having hot monkey sex for the first three months in the honeymoon period kind right. of thing. And then you were foolish enough to move in with her or whatever, you know, and you ended up having this sort of long term relationship. And right. well, if it's like after four months, I don't think you should move in. there. I'm a big fan of having my own space having my own place to do me and be me. But honestly, you got to get to know a woman. So if he's talking about moving in after three or four months, then yeah, I get you. If you are a man, get your own place first. Stick with your own place. Invite her over. Y'all talk. Y'all kick it. Y'all connect. And then if down the line, if y'all decide to get together and y'all say, all right, cool, to make sure that you taking care of your part of the bill, not part. Just make sure that you. This is your place. She might move in with you. Don't move in with her. Don't move in with her. I'm telling y'all, bro. So at some point, something shifted from genuine desire to sort of negotiating desire. And when you break up with that person. And then you and you come back to it, even if it works out for you, you're negotiating the terms for you coming back together. So, yeah, you might have that hot you know, makeup sex for a little while. And you might go through a, another sort of honeymoon period. But after a while, you're always going to have that one time where you guys broke up or that one time we had a break and she went and banged the guy in the foam cannon party in Cancun. Damn. And that's always going to be part of your relationship with that person. So what I always said is like the second part of that is this, is that it's always time better spent to get with somebody who doesn't know you, who you have a fresh start with, who you can learn from your mistakes if you have made any or whatever. Like maybe it's just you being more cautious or wary so that you have more experience and you move on from there. This is also why I say that spinning plates should be part of your your game, your plan uh, from the time you're like 18 all the way until you're about 30, 31, 32, maybe even beyond that. Mm. Because what that does is it does two things. It prevents you from getting slipping into the idea that, oh, there's this one special girl for me and, and, and she's the only one for me. Like you, you start you know, fixating or catch feelings or get one itis uh, when you are. Um, when you're spinning plates, when you're dating not exclusively, and I mean that in the terms of not in poly, you're not like have one side, one main girl and you've got like a few side girls. I mean, every one of your girls is side girls. Mm-hmm. When you do that, you're doing your, your, your forestalling, I guess, the, or, or preventing one itis, preventing the soulmate myth. You are in a uh, condition of abundance, at least mentally, even if you've only got like two girls or three girls, at least you're in a position of abundance where you can say, I can generate more options. I think that's I think what he said is super important, bro. Like, if you hear what he said, he said a lot of people one they one they get out of a relationship and they jump right into another relationship. Now, I honestly say it is not a good idea to get out of a relationship and jump into another one. Why? Because, bro, you need to take some time for yourself. After you have taken that time for yourself and you start to you start to get back into the dating scene, I would recommend getting into the gym first. I would recommend getting into your purpose first and then solidifying that and then jumping back into the dating game. But, hey, I ain't trying to be the master of your life. But if you do jump into the dating game and you want to do those other things as well, I would say just like him, he's saying, look, just chill out on thinking that one girl is the end all be all and just date around. And and me personally, I keep it I keep it G. Like I tell, hey, look, if, if somebody asks me, like, you talking to her, uh, yeah, I am. You talking 
I am. It's not none of their business, so I might not break down who I'm talking to, but just understand, you can go date, you know, you can date. You know, like if I'm talking to a girl, you can date, because I'm dating, and it's and I feel like it's better that way, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying there's anything we're wrong with getting exclusive, but just understand that, like, don't ever get into the mindset that this one person was the only person for me. There's billions of people. For men, there's billions of women or whatever you're into. If you're into other men, whatever, it don't matter. If you want to be a strong man, just understand that that person that you with is not the only person that you're ever going to experience. So just get that in your head, man. That options is what is where confidence comes from. So you're also developing confidence. The sec, uh, and then fourthly, um, you are also developing experience. So you understand women's nature better because you're dealing with different women and you're seeing what it is that you need and what, you know, from a long term partner, assuming that's what you want to do in the future. So you've got abundance, you've got experience, you've got uh, ins somewhat insurance against uh, this, you know, the soulmate thing. Uh, you're getting, you got experience, everything else. And that's one of the reasons why I keep saying, you know, uh, spinning plates is a good thing for guys, particularly when you're young. It's not just about getting, you know, hitting every girl you can, you know, for the sake of the sex. It's because there's other things that go along with it. You know, at the end of the day, man, you know, just get in the gym, stay focused on your goal, stay grinding for the next level, level up. If you got, if a girl broke up with you and she said, I'm good. Okay, understand, take that humble pie, take that. That L, that's a lesson, it's not a loss. You didn't lose somebody, you never had anybody. It was your turn, you never had anybody. Take that lesson, you got a lesson for life and keep it pushing, bro. It, this really works if you overweight and you, were, and you were broke. But let's say you were overweight and broke or let's just say you were average built and, and whatever. The girl left you, she left. She's like, uh-uh, you broke as hell, you're fat as fuck, all right? You know what I'm saying? You look like Peter Griffin on a, on a good day. And she left you based off those principles. Do you think that you getting stronger? Do you think that you getting wiser? And both of those things turns into money, tangible, tangible income. Do you think that you getting wealthier will make her say, hmm, I shouldn't have done that. Every single time, if you want to do better in life, your goal, your goal, if you want to get, let's say you want to get back at the ex that pissed you off, your goal isn't to fuck up her life. It's not to fuck up her life. Yo, the best way for you to get back at somebody, move the fuck on, move on. Focus on yourself, focus on your grind. Focus, focus the fuck. <laughs> I ain't finna just talk to y'all, I'ma show y'all. Focus on your style, focus on everything. I'm in grind mode right now, bro. Y'all, I'm not lying to you. I'm literally in grind mode. That's why I want to show y'all this video. But hey, if y'all like the style of video, let me know, man. I'll keep doing more of it, you know what I'm saying? Definitely have a lot of knowledge. Definitely I'm, I'm into a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? Definitely a red part of the Red Pill community, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all my Red Pill brothers, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, love y'all, be safe, peace.